Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about my one wheel pint and my one wheel XR, my thoughts on both, and which one I think is right for you. So first we'll get the specs. Uh, the one wheel pint retails for $950. It has six to eight miles of range. It tops out at 16 miles per hour, and I have yet to get up to 16 miles per hour. I don't know if it's because of the pushback, but it's really hard for me to push through the pushback on the pint compared to the XR. Um, and the one wheel XR retails for $17.99. It has 12 to 18 miles of range and a top speed of around 19 miles per hour, which I was able to get the top speed on my XR, which is like 19.2 for me, which I know some of you are mad men and women and have gotten like 23 miles, 28 miles. That's just not for me. Um, I'm more of a cruiser. I like to go slow and enjoy myself and not worry about face planting, which I have done a few times and it's not fun. Um, so my first board that I purchased was the One Wheel XR. I bought it last June. Uh, this board has around 960 miles on it and uh, I've loved every minute of it. Um, I will say that there's something that I found out like three quarters of the way into owning it that made it way better and I'll talk about that later um, but yeah it's been great to me I've used it to commute to work all the time I have a like a four and a half mile ride to work and it's mostly downhill on the way there so one thing that I have to always keep in mind with the XR is I got to be around like 90 percent battery life because I've overcharged many times and then I'm like running late for work and I'm going uphill to try to drain the battery down and that really, I wish they would come up with some sort of system where you could just set an amount of what you want to charge to, and it just shuts off there. It hasn't happened yet, but hopefully in a future board, it will. Um, so yeah, really, the only negative thing that I have to say about the XR is kind of the look of it, and I, I really like how it looks, but don't get me wrong, I think it looks great. But I've had probably, I'm not lying, probably 35 times where I'm riding in public and someone stops me and they ask me how I made it, and I just laugh. I'm just like, I did not make this board. I wish I could. I wish I had some sort of Mad Lab and all these materials, but I did not make this board. And if I did, I probably wouldn't be living in Wisconsin. Um, but uh, <laughs> And then, um, so yeah, I had the XR for a while, really liked it. And then I started releasing these videos of the pint. And when they first came out, I was like, nah, it's a little board. It's, it's for little people, which I'm not. I'm six foot two i weigh 260 pounds so i'm kind of pushing the limit of the xr already but i had never had a problem with this thing getting me up any hills and i never had it nosedive because of overpower or surging so i was just like ah whatever the pint is for my small friends um <laughs> but uh anyway so i kept seeing these videos and then i was just like watching reviews of people that were trying it at the demo event and i saw a guy that looked like he was at least 6'4 and over 260 pounds and it seemed to get him around just fine so then I kind of caught that bug where I was like all right I know I got the XR and I should be thankful but I think I'm gonna work an excessive amount of overtime in order to afford this pint and that's exactly what I did I worked like six Saturdays when I wasn't supposed to work just to pick up some extra money and um, ended up finding this board in Chicago which was about a two-hour drive it was like the best two hour drive of my life I was just so excited to go and pick it up and you know I, I just kind of bought into all the craze everyone was talking about how great it felt to ride how carvy it was and how nimble it was and I wanted to see what it was all about um, so I purchased the pint and I still remember I bought it at like a mall in Chicago it was like an outdoor mall and I got to my car and I was like, yeah, I don't have any rail guards on there or anything like that, any sort of protective stuff, but I still want to get on and see how it feels. So I rode it around the parking lot, and it had like a 30% charge. And like from the second I got on it, I was just amazed at how carvy it felt and how nimble it felt. And I just really felt like I was way more in control than I ever was on the XR. Um, now, the XR, you have control over it, but it's a whole different thing when you have a rounded tire. I mean, you feel like you could just weave in and out of anything if you're trail riding you feel like you can weave around all the little rocks and roots and everything and just really feel like you have complete control over the board um, so I started riding the pint a lot and it was like that perfect amount where I could ride it to work like I said it's about four and a half miles and it's all downhill so I would be able to ride it but the problem was on my way back 
this thing lugging me up hills is not a good story. I mean, it, it was able to take me up the hills, but the battery just got sucked completely very quick. Um, so what I found I was doing was stopping at a park. Uh, there was a nice river and there was an outdoor outlet at one of the local parks. And I would sit there every day and let it charge. It was like an hour and a half I would sit there. And then I found that Landsurf came out with like a nice little adapter where you could use your XR charger and then charge your pint in the same time that it would charge using the ultra charger or the hyper charger. I don't know which one it is. Um, but so that was nice. So I got that and then I was only having to charge for about 50 minutes. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever, this is great. The pint is my board, like my XR, I like it, but it's not gonna be my daily rider anymore just because I love how this board feels. Um, so I don't know, after like the honey, I guess the honeymoon period was over. It was like two months after I had the pint and I just realized like, man, I'm spending a lot of time at parks charging, sitting there waiting when I have my wife and kids at home, I started to feel kind of guilty. Like I'm just sitting at this peaceful park while my wife's chasing around her little maniac children. <laughs> but um, yeah, so anyways, I just was thought I gotta figure something else out, you know, and I've got this XR, I gotta start using it. So I went to the website, it was Shred Labs, put out a nice piece all about the one wheel tires that are available. Uh, I think they had a bunch of guys test out a bunch of different tires and say what the pros and cons were. And really what I, the main thing that I took away from that article was two things, was I need to upgrade my tire, and number two, they did not have very good stuff to say about the Vega, which I was kind of feeling the same way at that point, because it was like I was on the pint, and it was just bliss, you know, I, you could just carve perfectly, do everything you want, and then I would get on my XR, and I felt like I was riding a tank, like these, the sharp turns that you might have to take, everything just felt different. And uh, so I ended up settling on the Burris Slick for the XR. Um, and it, it was my first time ever doing a tire change. And it was not easy for my first time. I definitely ran into a couple of little trouble areas. But once I powered through those and got that tire on there, my first ride, it was like, okay, this is exactly what I want. You know, it's got the nice nimble, carvy feeling of the pint. But yet I've got the range of my XR. Um, so I think that's something that was really a game changer for me. And then along the way, they've come up with a couple other things for the XR that I've really enjoyed. One of them being a uh, third party device, which is the Fender Delete. And really this isn't, it doesn't serve any really great purpose for the board other than it looks really nice. Um, it just kind of unifies the board. Um, just makes it look more like a product and less like something that someone would build in their garage. Um, and then the second upgrade that I've found that I really like on the XR is this mag handle mount. Um, I had an extra mag handle because I had upgraded to the mag handle pro, which if I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it's a worthy upgrade or not. It's like one week into it and all the rubber started fraying off and it's just constantly falling off. So if I'm going to spend 60 to $70 on something, I really want it to last longer. So if I'm going to get another mag handle, I'll probably just go with the stock ones again. But um, once I got that mag handle on the XR, that made a huge difference. Um, I have tried carrying around the XRs that have the side mount handle, and those are nice, but the one thing that I really like about the mag handle mount is when you're holding it, it's actually angling the board away from you. So like for me, when I get to work and I'm going up a narrow stairwell, if I'm holding it from the side here, the board, the tires hitting me, hitting me in the leg, and it's just it just takes up a lot more space. Whereas when you got this angle, it, it just perfectly angles that board away from you so it's not running into you. Um, and that's not like a deal breaker, but it's just a nice thing that uh, you get when you get this mag handle mount. Um, so, so yeah, so now I've basically come to the conclusion that I still am a big fan of the pint. I know I'm gonna ride it. It's perfect for me for like when I take my dog, I take her on runs like every day in the summertime and we go like three and a half miles. This board is perfect for that. It's real nimble, it zips around. Now I got the treaded tire on there so I can take her on some nice trails and see how that goes. Um, so I definitely will get use out of it. And it's also just great to have another board for friends to ride. Uh, the only downside is when we do go riding, if I go trail riding with friends at the parks around here, we usually spend a lot of time at pavilions charging up and I'm kind of just sitting there with my board that's at like 80% 
and they're recharging. So it's one downside with the pint. Um, I guess I really didn't realize how much of a difference it makes with all that range, but it really does. And the XR is great in that respect. Um, so where I stand from this point going forward is I think I'm just going to continue to ride both boards. I'll probably heavily favor the XR because of the range. And I think when Future Motion announces their next product, I'll probably end up selling my pint and getting that product. I think what I really hope they do is some sort of a fusion between the XR and the pint, you know, where you have as much or more range than the XR. And maybe it's a little bit smaller than the XR, but not as small as the pint. Um, the pint, once you get the add-ons, like the, I have the Kushnug High on here, and that helps a lot for your back foot. Your back foot is in heaven, and your front foot feels like it's falling off both the front and the back of the board. And that's just for me. I know some people it doesn't bother them at all, but I think that that's something where if there is a new board out and you have more range, you will notice that a lot more. If you're 12 miles in on a ride and your feet are hanging, they're probably going to start going numb. Um, so I hope that they kind of meet somewhere in the middle. But um, I love both these products. I think Future Motion is doing a great job with what they're designing, and I can't wait to see what they have next. And uh, I hope this video helps someone today. So my final thoughts are, it's all about what your needs are. You know, if you're just going to use this thing to do a last mile commute, then yeah, the Pint's all you need. You know, it's half the price as the XR. It's very well built. They've made a lot of improvements for, you know, even like little things like how much um, debris gets kicked up. It's gone down a lot on the Pint. Actually, this past weekend, I took both these boards out and uh, my Pint had like, it was clean you know it was really nice and clean after i was done riding it i had the fenders on both of them but it was like the xr was just caked up all over the bottom side and the pint was caked up like a quarter of the amount so i don't know what's so different i think it's the clearance between the tire and that fender delete or the fender um but yeah it's it just seems to hold off debris a lot better than the xr does but um i'll definitely be selling my pint and upgrading to whatever product future motion comes out to with next um so yeah i hope you guys got something out of this if you liked what you saw please subscribe to my page and then just comment below and let me know what you ride and how long you've been riding i'd like to hear from some of you guys all right thank you